Welcome back Guardians. In a previous video, I discussed how Neomuna was created, specifically how an AI infused with Vex tech sent an Echo ship to escape the collapse. That ship is heavily suggested to be the beginning of Neomuna. Now what I didn't cover was how Neomunians, the people in the civilization of Neomuna, spawned from that. While there is limited law on how Neomuna became a thriving city, we do have law on the Echo project, and Neomuna was likely initially populated by an Echo ship. This provides a super interesting theory about how the first Neomunians were raised by Exos. Let's begin. If you have not seen my previous video about the creation of Neomuna, specifically the AI Soteria, you can watch that video for even more details. A link will be below and in the top right hand corner. But of course, I will tell you what you need to know for this video. Maya Sundaresh, a VEX researcher, developed an AI that used VEX technology to predict potential colony sites beyond our galaxy. The AI was called Soteria. Have a listen to the TM Cogburn custom plate. It reads, The Orgamind looks like a predictive engine directing expansion of extrasolar colonies. Maya Sundaresh made a clairvoyant AI using VEX tech. And also have a listen to this from the Terminus Horizon Law tab, which is actually Soteria providing a report to Maya Sundaresh about potential colony sites. It reads, AIS, Andromeda Galaxy, several million habitable worlds, 2.5 million light years, estimated echo travel time, 25,000 year average with neutrino sail and gravitational sling skipping. I have selected over 300 preliminary colony targets, with one favorite. You might be thinking, how would humans ever get to a colony site that is 25,000 years away? Remember that this is the golden age and no immortal guardians exist yet. However, at this time, exos have been created by Clovis Bray, which is important for later. When Soteria was performing these predictions of potential colony sites, she detected the darkness. Soteria then passed this information onto Rasputin, both agreed that whatever was happening was not so good, and of course they were correct, this was the beginning of the collapse. And so in response, Soterra began launching colony ships, specifically Echo ships. Clovis Bray detected the launches and thought that Soterra was malfunctioning, and so trapped Soterra into a pillory site, the dungeon Spire of the Watcher. Remember that pillory sites were initially created to partition Rasputin's mind and trap him into separate locations in case he ever went rogue. So Clovis knew it would be the perfect prison to trap another powerful AI, Soteria. In a last ditch effort, Soteria created a sub mind of herself and attached it to one of the Echo ships with the hope that this Echo ship would escape and rebuild humanity elsewhere. Of course, this Echo ship is predicted to be the ship that created Neomuna. Have a listen to the law entry into the sunset. It reads, She feels the Echo fleet slip from her control, called back to harbor. It is a death sentence. She will fracture a piece of herself. She will become less for survival. She does not know if she can expel a sub mind. She does not know any other option. With it, she may hold to a hope, even one. The fragment grips tight to a single echo craft, burrowing into its code and assuming direct control as Soteria is ripped away from it. Then there is only the fragment, born from Soteria, separated, wandering able to resist the spire only enough to continue onward. A fragment, unstable, lost, adrift, without guidance. It does not know where to go, and so it continues ever onward on the wake of its birthing impulse. Through the black, caught in gravity at the edge of soul, it fails, crashing through the azure clouds, hidden as best the fragment could, slowly deteriorating into obscurity. Right, so the question is, what was aboard the Echo ship that landed on Neptune? later to become Neomuna. To understand that, we need to understand some of the terminology associated with the colonization efforts. In general, colonization of space comes under the Exodus project, which you are likely familiar with. Exodus Black, Exodus Blue, Exodus Green. Big colony ships designed to take masses of people to the stars. With the Exodus project, some ships are likely to have their own discrete missions and objectives. For example, Exodus Green, which is the Exodus ship that carried all the people who became the Awoken, they also had Project Amrita, which specifically aimed to create a distant colony that could live free from the influence of the Traveller. 
My main point is you have the overarching generic Exodus program, which is all about colonization. But then within that program, you have divisions of ships that may have their own more specific objectives. This seems to be the case with Soteria, the Augur Mind. Not only did Soteria aim to perform these massive calculations to identify potential colony sites in other galaxies, but it was also linked to the Echo Project. Anna Bray actually discovers the objective of the Echo Project when investigating an abandoned Kalis station. Have a listen to the Legacy Part 2 web lore and you'll quickly identify the purpose of the Echo Project. I have split the entry up because it is quite a long entry because it's part of the web lore for Season of the Worthy. It is still a long quote, but I think it's worth it. Have a listen. Jinju continues, I've been going through the Pillory mainframe download. Those stations are meant to split Rasputin's mind up in the event that he became uh, insubordinate. That's disgusting. Echo appears to have been a contingency program that activates afterwards. They also had a cornerstone schematic of his brain. Jinju beams light over the fuselage as they float through the raptured bay in weightlessness. The reflective hull is filled with exos. Mannequin cadavers hang frozen on silk threads surrounded by globular blobs of various fluids. Loose wire tangle sags around the lifeless many. One or two glides freely within the cabin. Their chest plates share a pristine logo. Echo 1. Anna locates a crumpled worker frame beside the bay's internal airlock and signals Jinju to come over. The frame sparks to life, looks directly at Anna and speaks with grating age to its voice. Welcome, Anna Bray. Very excited to see a Bray walk this hall again. It has been a long time. Anna grasps at words, Jinju shrugs, plugs of light toss in zero G. The frame stands on magnetized foot cups and dusts itself off, nearly bumping into Jinju. Excuse me, small server bot. Server b The frame turns to Anna. How may I be of assistance? I'll unplug you. The frame ignores it. Anna smirks at Jinju, then looks at the frame. Walk with me, she says briskly moving deeper into the station. The two converse with Jinju in tow. The main section of the station is a wide open hall supported by struts. In large red lettering, the words, Echo Project, our legacy builds a horizon. Dozens of maintenance frame plates line the floor, some open, some semi-raised with collapsed frames steps away, half responding to a catastrophe. A scene in disorder. Zilch on Atlas. Anna stares out the translucent ceiling, wistful as the frame waits for another question. So those crops and the rings are food supplies for a colony mission? Yes. Thank you for asking that, Anna Bray. Yeah, and the colony ships are full of exos? Partially, Echo 1 and Echo 2 were stocked with exo unit crews. As you know, their task was to establish and oversee embryonic development at Colony M31, Site A and Site B. If Rasputin got out of hand, they weren't planning on resetting him. I don't have access to Clovis 1 to 12 directories. They just assumed he would win. The pillory is a last ditch panic room. I don't have access to Clovis 1 to 12 directories. Jinju's iris flicks back and forth between the two, her tiny light leash hums. Anna massages her palm. What was my role in all of this? As you know, your work on the warm mind made you a prime asset to oversee applicant selection. I chose the people in there? Anna watches the ringlet spin, her mind repeating the statement back to her. Artificial night slips back to artificial day as the station's rotation continues. As you know, yes. Additionally, your work on the war mind, as you know, was vital to the establishment of Clovis 1 to 12. Do I know where the candidates came from? Did they volunteer? I do not have access to candidate profiles. Anna shuts her eyes and takes a steady breath. Pretty crazy, right? There are multiple contingency plans in the case of Rasputin going rogue. The first were the pillory sides to divide and trap his mind, and the second was another failsafe, the Echo Project, which was staffed by Exos who were intended to oversee embryonic development, i.e. a fresh start to humanity raised by machines. It doesn't actually say, but it almost implies that there was these embryos, human embryos, I assume, next to each exo in these globular sacs, like an exo parent. Have a listen again with that hindsight. Mannequin cadavers hang frozen on silk threads, 
surrounded by globular blobs of various fluids. I assume the human embryos are in some sort of sci-fi suspension, preserving them for the 25,000 year trip. The Echo Project is like a complete restart of humanity. Now, you also may have noticed in the law entry that it specifically refers to Echo 1. What I didn't mention before was, guess what Soteria designated the Echo ships just before Clovis Bray trapped her? That's right, Echo 1. In the long arm law entry, just before Clovis Bray traps Soteria, she says this, AISH. Threat emergent imminent. Sir, I request you now designate this mission Echo 1. So we assume that if the ship that landed on Neomuna was part of the Echo 1 designation, then it too contained an Exo crew who intended to look after embryonic development. Meaning the Neomunians were born from these embryos. We assume human embryos, but Cloud Striders are actually really big and tall, towering over Guardians, and knowing Clovis Bray, maybe the embryos had been altered. Regardless, the Exos would then raise this new civilization. And that is why I say and predict that the people of Neomuna are going to be raised by Exos. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, leave the word ECHO to represent the ECHO project. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.